joy. Here's a quote. When you dance, your purpose is not to get to a certain place on the floor. It's to enjoy each step along the way. The way to most ensure the development soccer-wise of the youth is to make sure they come back. It's to make sure they'll come back. And what we know is participation in anything, whether it's an instrument or a sport, has everything to do with their enjoyment in the sport. If they enjoy, enjoy it, they'll participate again. They'll want to come back again. We judge our camps that we do at the University of Louisville, we judge it simply by, we ask the parents how much did they want to come back. How did they wake up early to come back to camp that day? And we know when the kids are excited about coming back, at the end of the week, we built a passion in them for the game. And what we also know is the more they keep coming back, we trust the game. The game will help their development. It is so critical that their experience be such a positive one that they're looking forward to going back to training. They're looking forward to going back to the game. And then when we create the environment that is positive, encouraging, healthy, the game will help their development. The game will help their growth. And in trusting in that, understanding one of our most important responsibilities as coaches at a youth level is to create simply a joyous, positive experience. One that's fun for them. One that they're saying when they leave, man, I can't wait to go back next time. That was so much fun. Now, how do we do that? What are some keys in creating an environment where their kids are going, man, that was great? In a training environment, there's a couple of ways. And let me, let me uh, I'll, I'll, it, it doesn't always have to look like the game of soccer. It doesn't always have to have lines and a big goal and a referee. And I'll give you a quick story. I was, I was um, living in, in uh, Akron, and I took Tyler, my son, he was six years old, hadn't participated in youth soccer yet. He was six years old and hadn't participated. And for a lot of reasons, Tina and I didn't put him in anything organized at this point. So we show up, and, and the purpose of us showing up, I brought Tyler with me, was to hand out camp brochures for our camp that we're doing. So big community park, lots of games going on, and I get there, and Tyler's eyes got about this big because he loved the game of soccer, and he saw all these kids his age playing. So he saw all these games going on, like four or five fields, and he looks at me and goes, Dad, can I get the game? And I went, oh boy. I said, Tyler, uh, you're not registered to play. So he looked at me and says, well, okay, register me. I'm like, let's get it done. I'm ready to go. So we hand out a few brochures, and Tyler's still tugging at me. He's still like, Dad, can I, you know, look at my friends? He sees all his kids. So I said, okay. So I'm watching one of the games go. I'm watching one of the games. And I see on the sidelines they had about as many kids off the field as they had on the field. So I walk over to the coach, and I said to the coach, I said, hey, look, why don't you give me those kids right now that, that you're not using? I'll take them over here, and when you need them, you know what, you can, you can use them for the game you got going on. You know, lines, goal, referee, the whole bit. So he looked at me, and I think he trusted me enough. I don't know if he knew who I was or not. So he gave me the kids. So we organized no vest, no, no, we had one ball. So we take some shoes and we throw them down, you know, we make two goals, and we said to the kids, here's the game. It's a game that never ends. There's no outs. If the ball goes through the goal, the first one to gets it, we keep playing. And I was participating with the kids, and we got it going. The game never stopped, and the kids were having so much fun. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the coach comes over and says, I need you and you, and the kids kind of like, no, we're okay. It's over. We're okay right here. And we kept on playing. Pretty soon, one of the parents come over, and he's talking with the coach, and he's pointing at his kid, drags his kid off, off of our game to put him in the real game. Understand the fun factor, the joy of putting them in an environment. It doesn't necessarily have to look like the game of soccer. If it involves the ball, 
Many times if it's competitive, those are two, two good starting points. Time is critical. Time is critical because depending on the age of the kids, how long you train is important. Many times as coaches, we feel more is better. But if we just put in another hour, we'll get more out of it. You know, we can stay here, we maybe we'll try, let's train five times a week, we'll get more. And many times, depending on the age, you get diminished returns the more you put in. Six years old, seven years old, an hour is good. You get eight, nine, an hour and 15, maybe an hour and a half most for the older kids, most. Why? Their attention span cannot handle it. Keeping them active for an hour at six years old and keeping them moving and that beautiful. You're in good shape. So more isn't always better, especially when you have the fun factor involved. Number two is be prepared. I know a lot of you probably going right from work out to the out to the field. And this is where we're going to try to help you some. Because we're going to give you some exercise. The book you got tonight is book one. There's going to be another book. And what it is is just going to have some exercises for you. Especially if you've never coached before, we're going to give you the tools and give you some exercises, simple things. So before you go out to the full to uh, the, uh, the the field, you're going to have a game plan of two or three things that you're going to do that day. That you move from one thing to the next. You you put the water from you know the water breaks in there as well. But be just five minutes of preparedness helps so much that the kids move from one thing to the other as soon as you have breaks. And how many people can tell you if you have a six-year-old group? And you have more than like a two minute break, it's hard to corral them back in, isn't it? Kind of get them over, we, you know, you're trying to get them all together again. It's hard to do. It's hard. So being prepared and going from one activity to the next activity and knowing what they are, water break here, get them back in. And if you have an hour, boy, that's going to be a lot. But spending five minutes prior to going out will make life so much easier once you're out there. If you have health, and I would recommend this as well, harder in the fall than it is in the spring, but even in the fall, if you can recruit some young soccer players in the area that will volunteer their time, because in church groups, there's a ton of kids that need volunteer hours. There's tons of kids that need, need community service hours in what they're doing. <clears throat> recruit them to help. They need to give back. We are constantly telling our kids to can, you know, they need to give back. So recruit some local kids, bring them out, and make sure they're on the same page. What they can do as well is this. If you're not good at demonstrating something, having somebody out there to do it is so powerful. The images we create, the examples they see, kids learn in different ways. Some are visual. They need to see it before they do it. You can talk to them all they want. My son's one of them. I got my youngest son. I can talk to him all day, and he's, you know, as soon as I show him, has it like that. Has it like that. So the ability to give that example. Be prepared before you head out. Third thing, include the ball as much as possible. FIFA, the governing body of soccer around the world, still says we're going to use the ball in soccer. So if we're going to use the ball, we want to make sure that the kids are comfortable with it. We talk about it like this. It's like a relationship. I'm assuming most everybody has relationships in here. The way they get better, you spend time with somebody. It's no different with the ball. The way you develop a relationship with the ball is you spend time with it. Everybody should have a ball at practice. Bring your ball and much as you can spend time, any activities with the ball. The more they can touch it, the better. And if you have lines, or you have them standing with a ball at their feet, just standing, you've got to stay there, don't do anything. It's like giving them a crayon and telling them, don't color yet. Yeah, you, you know, just hold it. But because kids want to move with it, they want to touch it. They want to create. They want to express themselves. So as much as we can, we want to include the ball in whatever we do. Avoid lines where they're standing, especially the younger ones. If you got them in lines, you know what's happening? They're poking the back of the head of the guy in front of them. <laughs> they're turning around. You know, they're picking. So as much as you can, avoid the lines so they're standing. 
again, preparedness helps in that. Keep them active, keep them moving. The last thing is, and this, this sounds a little bit contrary to what I've been saying, but keep it competitive. The kids like it when it's competitive. And it, competition's okay because really it's, it's their opportunity for growth. Without an opponent, without an adversary in life, there's very little growth. We need obstacles. We need challenges. It's really just a matter of what you focus on. If you focus on winning and losing from the competitiveness, now the kid's self-image is going to be struggling because of the result. Whereas if you focus on the values, the honesty, the caring, the respect, the responsibility, the effort, now those are the things that we get to measure because of the competitive environment. Listen, the kids are going to keep score. They're going to keep score. You know that. Who's been there? You throw out a game and you, look, we're playing backyard in my house. It doesn't matter where it is. We're keeping the score. The question is, as a coach, what are you going to focus on? What are you going to talk about? What is it that you're going to accentuate from the competitive environment you have created? You need it because it's part of their growth but we don't want to focus on the result. We don't want to measure ourselves by the result because the result will not always tell us how we did. I will tell you, at the University of Louisville, there are games we won, and I've been just irate at our guys because of the effort they put in, knowing that our standard was not hit. Likewise, there's times when we lost games where I say, man, guys, that was unbelievable. You guys were exceptional today. The result doesn't always tell us how we did. It needs to be competitive. It's part of the fun factor. The kids love when it's competitive. But again, what we focus on matters. 